Let's take a look at how to create our first tour. Go to Window, Complete 360 Tour to open up the Complete 360 Tour menu panel. From here, you're given two options. You can create a new tour from scratch or load an existing tour. To create a new tour, click the New Tour button, navigate to an appropriate location, give it a name, and click Save. This will open up an empty node graph ready for you to add your media. With the node graph open, we have a few options about how to bring in media. We can click the new image media node button, the new video media node button, or alternatively, we can navigate to our media and drag and drop it into the graph. By default, C360 loads images and prefabs using Unity's resources system. So your images and prefabs need to sit in or under a resources folder. If any of your media is stereoscopic, then select that media and press the S key on your keyboard. You'll notice that the thumbnail changes, which indicates whether or not the stereoscopic setting is correct. Whilst in the node graph view, you have several mouse controls you can use to navigate your graph. The middle mouse button or the right mouse button can be dragged in an empty area on your graph to pan around the graph view. Your scroll wheel could be used to zoom in and out, and your left mouse button can be clicked and dragged to multi-select nodes. Clicking an individual node will also select it. And when you have any number of nodes selected, clicking and dragging on any of those nodes will move them around the graph view. Nodes will snap to the nearest grid point to help you keep your graph neat. If you want to delete a node or multiple nodes, just select them and press the delete or backspace key on your keyboard. So let's start adding some hotspot connections to our tool. By right clicking and dragging out from a node, we can open up the gesture menu, which allows us to access a variety of tools. The first tool is the mapping panel, which allows us to place our hotspots on top of our media. The second creates a hotspot and will allow us to connect this node to another node. The prefab will allow us to add a prefab to that particular node, and the relocate media button will let us reassign a piece of media to this particular node. When working in the node graph, it can be useful to maximize the node graph view. Right click on the 360 tour panel tab and click the maximize button. Let's start by adding some hotspots. I'll right click on Corridor, go to the Add Hotspot tool, and I'll be given a connection. When I hover over any one of the other media nodes, the connection will snap to that node, indicating that it's a viable target. As soon as I click that node, I'm given a hotspot and a mapping panel view where I can place where in my scene I'd like that particular hotspot to appear. So I'm going to place it here. I can then click anywhere outside of the mapping panel to go back to my node view. Now that we've made some progress with our tour, it's worth noting that you'll need to save your tour before it will be usable. You can click the Save button up here to save the tour over the top of the current one, Save As to save this tour as a new tour, or just click the Back button in order to auto-save over your current tour file. So let's take a look at that hotspot we just made. If I right-click and go to the Mapping panel, I return to this view. By hovering over a hotspot, I can see where it links to, and by clicking and dragging, I can move it around the scene. If I don't want this hotspot anymore, I can press the backspace or delete key on my keyboard. Using just this really simple tool, I can map out all of the hotspots required for my tour. By hovering my mouse over a particular media node, I can see highlighted connections which relate to which hotspots are leaving this node. As well as just hotspot connections, we can add prefabs to our nodes. To do this, we open up our gesture tool, select the prefab tool, and then navigate to our prefab. In the Example Tour Resources Prefabs directory, you'll find a bunch of prefabs that we've included out of the box that we think you guys will find really helpful. So let's pick the text prefab. I can place it in the scene just like it were a normal hotspot. And this little warning icon will indicate to me that we haven't got any runtime data associated with it. By clicking the New button, a new piece of data will be created and associated with this prefab. From here, I can edit what text will appear in this prefab, some colors, and an icon. It's worth noting that different prefabs, including custom prefabs, will have different types of data associated with them. For example, the Complete Menu prefab allows you to choose a logo, and an Audio Source prefab will let you choose an audio clip, mixer group, volume, whether or not it's spatialized, and whether it loops. 